Jim Gamble. He's the senior child protection officer in the UK's first investigation into the disappearance of Madeleine McCann. Uh, good afternoon to you, Mr Gamble. How significant is this? Well, I, I think it's really important, um, not least because the clock has been ticking on the statute of limitations that exists within the Portuguese legal framework. Um, but moreover than that, I think if the Portuguese authorities now feel able uh, to identify this individual as a person of interest in their investigation and designate them Arguido, uh, then they must believe they have significant amounts of evidence. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. I mean, is this about the clock running down on being able to charge somebody, or do you think that there is uh, genuinely new information? Well, I don't think anyone's surprised that the clock's been ticking. There was conversations about three or four months ago that indeed, um, you know, you were moving towards that period where the statute of limitations in Portugal may kick in. And what that would do would limit the Portuguese ability to hold an individual to account, not, for example, the, the Germans. But I think it, it's more than that, because there is a legitimate argument that says, well, even if they'd gone beyond the 3rd of May, which is next week, beyond the 15 years, they could perhaps have made an application to a court to say, look, with the pandemic, with, with backlogs, uh, we could make an exception. But they, they aren't having to do that now, so that's a good thing. But I do uh, believe that certainly I am tilting more to the fact that they have their own information, the information that, that the German authorities have collected, and indeed uh, Operation Grange and, and New Scotland Yard will undoubtedly have shared so I hope now is the time when the Portuguese feel sufficiently confident on the back of this to apply for the extradition of the subject so that he can be interviewed in Portugal by them. Now, this individual denies any involvement uh, with Madeleine McCann, it's important to say, but what do we know about him and uh, why the interest in him? Well, I think it's right to highlight the fact that he denies any involvement and he's not even charged uh, with this particular offence at this time. But what we do know about him is that he's, uh, you know, an unscrupulous uh, character. You know, he's someone that, that you wouldn't want to be looking after your children or engaging with you in, in any place. He's a convicted rapist. The, the key issues around this for me are that he's someone that's been known uh, to the investigation since uh, the earliest of times. He was known, um, for example... Uh, in 2011, he was in information that was passed to the British police as they took over um, the, their part of the investigation in 2012, and the Germans had a tip-off about him in 2013. So he's not new to the table. And, and I think there are some factors around the circumstantial evidence that tilts towards him that are really, really interesting and quite significant in themselves. Uh, like what? Well... For example, um, proximity and thereby opportunity uh, and, and, and his profile. So you, we can put him, um, or at least a phone attributed to him, in proximity of the, the McCann's apartment on the evening that the crime took place. That's significant. What we also know is here's a man who lived in that part of Prea de Luz from 1995 to 2007, a man who would later be convicted from the rape of an older woman in 2005 in that same area. A man that court papers disclose um, has been involved in the burglaries of hotel rooms uh, and holiday lets. A man that, that, that we know um, has had indecent images of children on a thumb drive. An individual, when their camper van was searched, you know, who was in possession or constructive possession of children's clothing. So when you start to take one of those things in isolation, you could maybe unpick it. But when you put them all together, I would say that whilst we are not a court of law, we cannot find him guilty. But what you can see are the clear lines of inquiry, the levels of corroboration that you would expect um, for him to be made the person of interest and that the Portuguese have made him. So, so I think they would be wanting you know, in their duty if they didn't now uh, bring him back to Portugal and put the questions that they have to him. Over the 15 years, Jim, you'll know more than most that, that there have been many false dawns, haven't there, um, in the search for Madeleine McCann. Uh, does, in, just in terms of your gut feeling, does it feel like this could uh, unlock 
the answer? You know, my, my gut feeling in 2020, when the German police began to unpack the information they had about this individual, was that this felt more right than anything else that we'd had up until that, that moment in time. And the other thing about the, the German police investigation is if you listen to the German prosecutors speaking and the police officers, you know, there's a level of confidence in what they're saying that I think uh, is, is important because having worked with German police before, they, they, they don't say things, um, they, they don't make false promises, they don't build, you know, hope and anticipation for no reason. That's not the, that's not the culture that exists there. So I think... There's something significant. There's something significant. Sorry. There's something significant in that, and I do believe that that this case, at this moment in time, represents the best opportunity that that I've seen in 15 years of of being in the in the margins of this case.